Hi everyone, welcome back to another week of The Guest Life. So today's topic is a topic that I've been procrastinating and mainly because I don't know the technicalities of it, I don't know the jargon, I wouldn't be able to do it justice, and that is our solar system. So I've finally talked my handsome husband into doing a little snippet for me so you guys can actually have a walkthrough of it. And truthfully, I'm happy it was procrastinated for a bit because we've done some upgrades, we continue to do upgrades, and where we are right now, it's really, really good. Like we're having to run the generator. Well, depending, obviously, like if we're having gloomy days. Last week it was gloomy. So worst case scenario, it was gloomy and cloudy all last week. And we had to bump up the uh, batteries every th two to three days. And it would only, the generator would have to run for about three hours. It's at a 50 amp charge. So it's, it's really bumping them up. But I mean, that's pretty darn good. Considering when we moved out here, the generator had to be running three hours every single day, regardless of the situation, just to bump up the batteries and keep everything in tip top shape. Just one thing before I, <laughs> ugh, this man, I tell you, one thing before I pass the camera off to him and it'll be his turn to be videoed. Um, I'd like to say the system isn't beautiful. It's not perfect, but I think that adds to the coolness of it all because just a regular Joe Blow can throw this system together. Um, John's not an electrician. We've been adding to it. Uh, there's no labor hours required. He's done it all by himself. And if you ask me, he's done a really good job. So I'll let John take you through a run through of it. And then I'll just talk a little bit more about the system and things that I know and how it works for us on a day-to-day -day basis. And there's my beautiful Husky who has ripped up yet another toy. She murders her toys and then hugs them for a day. Little brat. So We'll start off with what we originally used to have at the cabin was a 200 watt solar panel and maybe originally three 80 amp hour deep cycle batteries, which was enough for lights, the ceiling fan, charging phones. And then we upgraded to six 80 amp hour deep cycle batteries and one 340 watt panel and one 200 watt panel is what we originally had. That was because we got the 12 volt solar fridge and that would keep up, but we, if we want to do any type of demands like the Starlink or TVs, we'd have to run the generator to keep up with the system then. Now we'll go through what we have at the moment and what's working for us is we got a total of three 340 watt solar panels um, and two of them at the moment are wired in series and just the one on its own, uh, two separate controllers. Um, so we'll go in and we'll check it out majority of it just powered off 12 volts all the lights led 12 volt in the bedrooms we have 12 volt power outlets uh, the water pump inside is a 12 volt pump so basically and the fridge is 12 volt pump so basically the cabin can be self-sustained on 12 volts other than our on-demand hot water heater which is in the bathroom and the starlink and the tvs which runs off the inverter and the, the main thing about solar systems what i think i've learned over the years is your solar system is only as good as your batteries and your batteries are only as good as your solar systems. Because if you have all the panels and not enough batteries and you're, you know, you can have more banked power or if you have too much batteries and not enough panel, which I felt like we had at one point, I was never able to charge the batteries to full capacity. Not the best wiring, but we got, because everything's powered on, a lot of things are 12 volts. So I have everything fused in just to a 12 volt block. So everything's isolated, main 40 amp fuse back there. So the batteries at the moment, which aren't that old now are three 220 amp hour batteries at a 12 volt deep cycle that was coming from our five 80 amp hours which were questionable batteries and there's too much system too much batteries I, I think just too complicated yeah then if we go down to our uh renogy 3000 watt inverter charger works awesome because i have it plugged into the generator and it's capable of a 70 amp charge but my 2000 watt generator couldn't handle that. So, which is nice, it's adjustable for any parameter. So I'm able to adjust it at 50 amp charge, the generator likes it. And I can charge these batteries. So they're down close to 12 volts in about two hours. Maybe a little bit more depending. Yeah, it's great, works, the system works awesome. And it's shut off at night Then the fridge is still on at 12 volt. We still have lights. We can still charge things without the inverter being on, which works really good. But the, the, soul, the fridge does grab almost constant 80 watts of draw. So we found that the fridge really puts a damper on the system. We're good. If we have light and sun every day, no, no, no problem. Lots of power. You can power the cabin day after day without the generator running. If we have a gloomy day, you might need a bump up in the evening, depending 
on the draw TV, Starlink, etc., etc. So this is where we feel like it's working good for us. Today, you know, we did a load of laundry. We have everything running, the Traeger running, and I'm confident that these batteries will be charged up in a couple more hours at the 37 amps coming in. It's almost addicting solar system and you find yourselves you find yourself wanting more and more, it seems like, which is strange, but I think we're there and eventually I'm gonna get one more panel uh, to match the two on this side and then I can run those in series also and then maybe another battery or two then we'll have adequate more than enough power but at th this time and moment it's working perfect for us. See now there was about a quarter of that that I didn't understand so it was better for you that he talked through it instead of me and I thank him for that because it's a little bit nerve-wracking when somebody's holding a camera in your face and telling you to talk about things um, but I'll just kind of go through what I know and what I just kind of look for on a day-to-day -day basis to try to keep our system healthy and what it's doing for us. So first off, our old system ended up going onto this little um, guest house that the girls sleep in in the summertime. It's an absolute mess in here right now because what is a little guest house in the summer turns to a shed in the winter. But anyway, um, John's put a little monitor up here for the girls. There's a teeny inverter. They have their own little TV and their little Apple TV hooked up. The old batteries are there. So they don't really go on the TV much, but it powers their little light bulb and we don't have to babysit the system whatsoever. The solar panel keeps up more than enough. And then in terms of our system, I rely on this little monitor right here and it shows me if I need to bump up my batteries or how the system is doing. So I'm always keeping my eye on the volts. If it gets to 12, 11, 9, I'm pushing it, but that's usually at least under load. I'll run outside and start the generator to bump up the battery. And then the next number I'm keeping my eye on is my amps because if I'm in a plus or I'm slightly negative and I know the sun's peeking out, even if this is at 11, nine or 12, I'll leave it alone. We won't use anything. And I know darn well that my solar system will start helping me. And it's also kind of fun looking at my amps because since we've gotten our new solar panel and gotten that hooked up in the middle of the day from like, I don't know, noon to five or six, if we have a nice sunny day, it's just pumping out the amps. Like I get like 20 all the way up to 40 and we'll have everything on starlink tvs i'm doing laundry pumping water i could just do whatever the heck i want and i'm making power so it's really exciting uh, to see that because we never were able to do that before we'd have to make sure our batteries were happy and then we'd use it and it would slowly draw down and then oh, okay we better shut it off so we have enough for tonight unless we want to actually bump up the batteries which we've been avoiding as much as possible like that's the whole goal of it all is not to ever have to run the generator and one more little thing i'm just going to add and edit into the video is when i'm looking at my amps and they've gone down like i was showing you in the last clip when i was pointing around my batteries are bumped up so once my amps go way down and it's nice and sunny out I know darn well that my batteries are bumped up also it helps me keep an eye on when I am running the generator once those drop significantly uh, then I know that I can turn off my generator I can actually hear it from inside the cabin my generator will be going like ah running 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 and then all of a sudden Aah. and sure enough I go over to my monitor and everything's all bumped up so then you don't have to waste more fuel than you have to and in terms of running the generator we've been out here since May, we're about to ditch, it's the end of October. So we've been here for roughly five months and we've gone through, we think, three jerry cans of fuel. And I won't have to do a full three hour bump up most of the time. Like in the morning, if I'm kind of sucking slew water and I'm getting down to 11, nine, 11, eight, and we're not really building anything, I'll just bump them up for an hour because I know a little bit of sun will come even if it's kind of cloudy and then we'll be fine for the night. And it's not only great for the fuel consumption, but it's really good for the wear and tear of our little generator because it'd be great if that could last us a few more years. Or is it hiding behind me? And John's made a little cover for it out of an old cowling so that it can stay out of the sun and rain, which is super cool. John mentioned earlier, we have some of the cabins set up purely to 12 volts, so it'll run regardless whether the inverter is on or not. And that is the fan for the toilet, all the lights, the charging stations, and the fridge, which is a big one. And if at nighttime I go to bed and it's 12-2, I'm perfectly safe in the morning and I haven't reached my 11.9 yet. That's kind of like my little magic number. I look before I go to bed, do I have to bump it up for a little bit? And if it's at 12.4, I get to watch TV before I go to sleep. And in case any of you are interested in what we're in it for, uh, about 3,600 bucks. Now these are just kind of estimates, but I have kind of overestimated on things. So yeah, a little under four grand and we're set up for solar. 
and I haven't asked permission, but I'm going to mention him anyway, is our amazing electrician from EMF. He's helped us with all of our solar needs and little things at the townhouse and he's just great like the amount of times john has bounced things off him he's probably like oh my gosh stop asking me solar questions <laughs> but he's more than willing and he's really great with all of it and anything we ever need I tops has been a couple days away which is really convenient because usually we're like spur of the moment we want to change something but yeah i just thought i'd throw him in there Yes, that's that for this video. Hopefully it was helpful and hopefully not too confusing. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.